All right, guys, so this is the new consumer information statement. I'm going to do a video on this one explaining the new parts of it. Not going to go through the entire form. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you guys know seller's agent, buyer's agent, disclosed dual agent. What has been added to this that's important uh, that you need to understand is the designated agent. But I do want to touch on a couple of things. Again, this has to be presented to your seller, buyer, landlord, tenant. Signs CIS prior to discussing and motivation to sell or lease or the desired selling or leasing price. And on the buyer tenant side, prior to discussing the motivation to buy or lease or the desired buying or leasing price, it has to be disclosed to them. It has to be presented to them and explained to your client prior to these two times. Okay. Uh, now, again, you understand seller's agent, you understand buyer's agent. I want to touch on disclosed dual agent and designated agent because there is some um, questions on this right now. You guys are very familiar with disclosed dual agency that has been around for us in Jersey for a while. PA has had it for quite some time. Now, acting as a disclosed dual agent, the brokerage firm acting as disclosed dual agent may not put one party's interest ahead uh, the other parties and cannot advise or counsel either party on how to gain an advantage at the expense of the of the other party on the basis of confidential information obtained from or about the other party guys as a disclosed dual agent it is the brokerage firm that is acting as a dual agent please keep that in mind it is not an individual agent i have heard people talk about prior in the past they have a seller and then they get a buyer that i don't want to be a dual agent i'm just going to hand them over to someone in the office no, that's not dual agent. It, the dual agency, again, it, it sticks with the broker. So even if you hand it over to another agent in the office, it's still a dual agency unless you become a designated agent. So getting into that, okay? When you're talking to your clients about dual agency, you have to explain that the effects of dual representation of the firm's fiduciary duties to each party, including that by consenting to the dual agency relationship, the buyer and seller are forfeiting their right of undivided loyalty. So you have to understand you do become an intermediary with dual agency. Your clients need to understand you become an intermediary with dual agency. You cannot help one party gain an edge over the other. Can't do it. Um, now, enter designated agent. We can, or you can, act as a designated agent and a brokerage can appoint a designated agent. So what happens with that, again, upon the informed consent of the buyer, so that brokerage firm that represents both parties, firm that represents both parties as a disclosed agent may designate separate individual agents to represent the buyer and seller. Each designated agent represents the interest of their designated principal buyer or seller and advocates on their behalf in negotiations between the buyer and seller. Okay, designated agents have duties that are the same as a buyer's or seller's agent as applicable, which are summarized above. So that's what you have to understand that if there is designated agency, then each agent represents their party, same as seller's agent and buyer's agent. Okay, no difference to that. So a lot of it comes down to what your client wants. Uh, if they would like, if they're okay with you being a dual agent, if not, if they want to go for designated agency, then another agent in the brokerage would have to be designated to them to represent their interest and take them all the way through to closing in the transaction. Now, in doing that, it's also a situation where you can reach out to um, an agent in the office and say, hey, look, can you act as a designated agent for this client and pay me referral fee of X to closing? I understand it cuts into your into your bank account a little bit, but if your client does not want dual agency and they would rather have designated agency, you need to make sure that we're adhering to that. And it's a way for you to also uh, put some money in your bank rather than lose them and they go to someone else. All right. So this is the CIS explained. Again, you have to get them to sign prior to these two situations down here. Uh, if your person does not want to sign this, you need to make sure you make a notation somewhere in your notes app on a piece of paper or on this form. You keep it and say, I presented this form to Mr. Buyer on August 6th at 2.38 p.m. and they refused to sign it. That way you at least have some kind of record that you presented it to them. All right. Any questions on this? Let me know.